Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Lenny here, and I have the honor of having Mr. Diaz in the house. How are you doing, sir? Great, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited, excited, excited to have you on here. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, DreamChasers.com. Go check out that podcast. Thank you, Adam Carswell, uh, for the sponsorship. But what I like to do, my man, is I like to let their guests tell the story where they want to start. So you start out and we'll go from there. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate that. Um, So I've been in restaurants for about 15 years. I'll just chunk that together. Uh, You know, I work myself from a young cashier and dishwasher to um, multi-unit management. So I did that for a certain company uh, based out of California. This past summer, it shut down. so it gave me some time to kind of look into what my next steps are. Currently, I'm working as a GM at a quick service restaurant um, here in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So from there, uh, I'll kind of take it back to in the summer. That's when we closed down. Um, what what a, before I even even the company shut down, I was already looking at what's my next step. Am I going to take this career further? Am I going to get out of the restaurant? Should I go into full service? You know, I was just kind of debating all that. Um, and nothing really was decided, right? Until I had to decide something. Right? <laughs> isn't that, isn't that life? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I, I went on a exploring online and just researching and went down the rabbit hole from YouTube, reading books, listening to podcasts. I mean, I devoured, you know, six, seven podcasts sometimes in a day. Um, because I had the time, right? <laughs> so I definitely took advantage of that. Um, and I just took a, as much knowledge as I could. Um, I'm very comfortable at this point with the theory behind it. Now it's time to put action into it. Um, so I did that for a while, but I, while I looked at real estate, I knew there was something that was missing. Um, even when I was in restaurants, you know, you work long days and you, you take that on. Um, but I definitely looked at health and fitness as something that I needed. I needed more energy. I knew that it was going to be a grind in the beginning to start essentially a business, right? Um, so I, I, what I did is how can I get to that point faster, right? I looked at that. So I heard a coach. She's been amazing. Um, taught me about nutrition, taught me about how to exercise. And I decided to do that because I knew – I've tried to do something for 30 years, right? And I said, there's definitely something that I need to do different. And why not hire an expert? When you hire an expert, they can expedite that process. And I told her what I wanted, essentially a lifestyle of health. That's my main goal. She did that for me. I said, just tell me what to do. I'm not going to question anything. Why would I? And that's what I've been doing. I've lost 35 pounds already in the last couple of months. Um, and we still got to work on that, right? So. No, I love that. And the, and more important, there's so much of there. How do you feel though? Like I, the weight loss is a byproduct of, of other things. I'm just curious your mindset and kind of how you feel in general. Sure. So I mentioned the lifestyle aspect, right? So it's becoming a behavior now so that I don't even have to think about it. My body naturally now wants water, food, better food. Um, it just things that I used to like. Um, you know, I'll bring alcohol to the picture and, you know, I'll have a few drinks that I had no big deal. Now it's, I have one or two the next day I'm suffering. <laughs> I feel it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the behavior part is what I wanted. That's the main goal. And I already have that looking day in and day out, really choosing what you want to put into your body is important. And that gives you this energy that I never thought I had. What I noticed right away is when I first started working out, Sure, I was tired, but my brain was wired. 
right? And it kept giving me that energy that at first I was like, this is different, this is weird, but I loved it. So I, now I keep doing it. And that's what really what I was looking for. Well, what's wild to me is that you said it perfectly, like your brain was wired. And it's like, but but like more importantly, like what would you tell anybody out there? Like it truly is one day at a time. Like, and 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 I love the aspect of tell me what to do. I'm not gonna question it. I'm the same way. Just tell me what to do. I'm gonna go do it. Tell me what would you tell anybody that's maybe on the other side of that that hasn't started yet? What what advice would you give to them? It, the one thing that really prompted me was how am I going to be successful in the long term? It's really going to be how passionate you are, how energetic you are. And that's really what I wanted to do. And I just made a phone call. I scheduled a consultation. Um, and then I just started doing that, whatever she said. And they were challenging the first days, but I said, let me just put my effort in, whatever it might be. I'm going to get it back. So eventually I'll catch up to what she's actually expecting, right? Uh-huh. Or my progress will reach to what I uh-huh. want to see. Uh-huh. Um, and, and, you know, just taking that first step really, really worked out for me. Well, what's interesting, right, with my coaching clients and kind of anybody in general, and I'm sure Diego and Felipe are the same way, is we're talking to you as if we already see it done for you, right? And when we see it done for you, yeah, it might sound like it's a stretch, but it almost subconsciously or like whatever you want to call it pulls you along. And when it pulls you along, you kind of you, with your actions and kind of the way you feel eventually catches up with where you're going. Sure it does. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, man. Yeah. And so we got the health, we're getting the health dialed in. You've worked in the restaurant business, you know, me 20 years in the restaurant business. Right. Uh, what attracted you towards real estate or mainly just wanting to get out of that? area in general like it was it freedom was it more time for yourself like what attracted you there's a lot of aspects i mean i i know i'm a great operator i can say that i feel very comfortable in saying that and when you have a business and either you know flipping wholesaling um or rental properties there's a lot of aspects when you're operating a business like a restaurant or anything else that translate very easily um so that's something that i know that i'm I'm, I feel like I'm good at. I can continue doing that there. Um, and the whole flipping side of it is what really kind of fires me up too. Mm-hmm. Now, long term, yes, time is is something that I want back. Um, you know, you put a lot of time in the restaurant mm-hmm. and why not do it for yourself, right? So operate something that's going to be yours. Um, now, the other aspect is what what... You know, when I go back to now rentals and getting a rental portfolio, that's something again that you're operating. So there's different aspects that just really come back and really translate for that resonate for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you started on YouTube's and podcasts, what was the initial? Was it a book? Was it a podcast? Was it somebody? Did they introduce you to something that kind of pulled the thread that started it all? Well, when I was younger, my parents had a property um we moved to what is now their primary home they still had that they had a three flat three unit property and they they sold that off after some time and i didn't know what any of this meant until now and you know these last three four months is when i really started picking their brain on why did they do these things and what were they what was their experience Mm -hmm. Um, because money was not a conversation in our family at all, whether good or bad. It just mm-hmm. was not something that was brought up. So when I started listening to what their worries are, their 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 experiences, whether they're a negative, um, you know, that's that's what kind of said, hey, let's let's go back to that. Let's go back to trying to do something. Now it's interesting, one parent says, Yes, let's do it. The other parent says, no chance <laughs> right so they had different different ends of the spectrum yeah you know try to convince my dad about hey let's get a line of credit your property's paid off let's do it man he's like no no chance in hell <laughs> so that's, that's yeah. it's, it's, it'll be a good follow-up to see where it where it goes yeah 100 percent. and uh i know you listen to a lot of podcasts i know 
if I, I know it's hard because there's so much that you've listened to. Yeah. But just, but just an overall point of view of like, things that you've learned, maybe that would be a benefit or value to people that are listening that are new to real estate. So things that, that kind of like were aha moments to you. Sure. Uh, what are those things? So I started reading books. Um, and, and there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of information. You got to filter out what works for you and what you have to know who you are, what mm-hmm. really resonates with you. Um, I, I spoke to, to an investor out in California just reached out to him and he definitely gave me some time and suggested a book. Um, and that book really kind of sparked something for me, which was the uh, Millionaire Real Estate Investor. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Keller, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that book had like this bl- blueprint um, of, of how to start a real estate business, right? That again resonates with me, just kind of like, hey, leave it to the experts. Look at Look at what has been done, replicate it. If it works, it works. Now, mm-hmm. if you do what works for you, fine. But there's there's a method that already works. Why not just take that on? So mm-hmm. that's a book that kind of does that for you. You can talk about Think and Grow Rich. You can think about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Those are definitely going to be able to kind of change your perspective or give you a different different way of looking at things. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are, uh, um, I also joined mastermind groups, right? I'm um, with Diego and Felipe, like you mentioned earlier. Those mm-hmm. guys definitely pushed the, the, the spectrum here for me. Um, just the, food, the the fact that there's a community that you can reach out to anyone there, the networking piece is the most important part. Um, yeah. So surround yourself with those people because in my situation, no one around me has this, this type of perspective. Mm-hmm. Like no one is thinking, hey, let's do properties, let's do rent, let's do flipping, nothing like that. That's not a mm-hmm. conversation. When I bring it up with my friends, you're crazy, man. That's what I get. <laughs> yeah. Right? It, 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 and, to, and to talk about that aspect, because Masterminds did that for me too, um, what I've noticed with you as I follow your social media um, is that you're doing a lot of things these days that are pushing you past comfort levels that you probably, this is like, I would imagine that if you looked at yourself today and you looked at yourself six months ago, there's a lot of like thresholds that you've broken through. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that social, that social media challenge, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a simple one. Um, you know, I didn't decide to do it to the very day I started the first video. Mm-hmm. Just because it, it was mentioned a week before and I said, yeah, I'll do it. And then I didn't do anything for it. I didn't think about it until that day that hey, it hits day one where everybody agreed to start. And I said, just do it. I have mm-hmm. to. It's something that, you know, one of the biggest things that I want to do is also I'm learning. So I want to share as much as people around me don't believe in what I'm doing or don't agree or challenge it. I want them to know about it so they can have that option. That's mm-hmm. it. I want to present it to those that are in my situation or have never heard of it mm-hmm. um, and they could do what they will with it but it's something that i think everyone should have a, an opportunity to get into what did you what did you learn about yourself and about the information that you were putting out in that in that short 21 days challenge um i definitely know more than i think uh you know that but i think i since i'm in that situation now i thought it's time to implement it and have proof of concept for myself. And if someone says, why do you keep doing it? I haven't seen you do anything. I wanted to see that I've done something, right? I got to put some backbone into it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm ready for that. And we're working on that now. For sure. And was it as scary as you thought it was going to be once you got going? Yeah. I mean, definitely it got easier as time went on. Um, mm-hmm. You know, even conversations like this is not something that I'm comfortable with 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done it for work, but that's for work, and you know your knowledge there and whatnot. It gets easier, but when you're doing a conversation about um, something that you're new, yeah, it's a little difficult for you. So you just got to keep pushing it and keep staying accountable and surrounding yourself again with those people that are doing it will help you do that. Hundred percent. And I'm being real gentle right now. You know, I'm. <laughs> I'm I, you, you know, you see me. You see me. I'm being real gentle right now because I, I understand, right? And uh, you know, it's funny. I I, I look back. Um, 
just first podcast to, to now, you know, like even me, I'm more comfortable. And then, and I think people have to understand is like the number one thing you, you can't do is you gotta, you can't beat yourself up. Like, right. Every, every stepping stone is a new opportunity and, and, and every, um, chance you turn on the camera, you turn on the phone, it's a new opportunity to get better. And you mentioned before we got started that you were looking at doing your first uh, house hack uh, for your first property. For anybody that doesn't understand what that is, can you explain us to uh, why you choose that vehicle for your first one? Sure. Um, so house hacking is getting a, a property where you can either, if you're in a single family home, rent out the rest of the rooms, kind of cover your your mortgage, your your expenses on that or you could do it in a small multifamily two three flats four flats um do the same thing you live in one unit rent out the other ones um the idea is to cover at least the expenses and maybe have some cash flow after that right so for sure and and you're looking at it in the chicago area i am yeah okay where i'm from and i i definitely know the neighborhoods here Mm -hmm. and i think it's best for me to to invest in the place where I know, right? So it's definitely something that a lot of people have told me not to do, right? That is interesting because it's a, it's what they call a uh, tenant friendly state. So mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. a lot of ordinance to know, but I figure, hey, if you're gonna be an investor, you should be able to invest anywhere. Yeah, hundred percent. And are you looking for a property that needs a little work or are you looking for a turnkey property? Uh, this this one I could just do a turnkey property because I'm also looking at a off market deals. Um, okay. So using some software to look for those, I have. Yeah. Question. How how are you how are you searching for those deals? Yeah, so the software I got was PropStream, so I use that. Um, pulling some lists, calling some people, and see where that takes me. And mm-hmm. being able to take down two at one time would be pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah. And so basically for anybody that doesn't understand what that is, PopStream is just basically a data list. So you can find different avenues of whether they have equity in their house or it's paid off or, or de- delinquent on bills or something. And then you would just call said owner uh, and see if they're interested in selling. You always present yourself as an investor looking to buy. Uh, and that's a way for to get into an undermarket deal. If, if you had to lay out um the next couple months or years you know where are you headed what do you want to focus on and and is the eventual plan to get out of the restaurant business eventually or are you going to continue to keep your w2 no it is to get out um i i want to get out this year that's the plan um essentially i looked for a job because i wanted to get the financing the cheap <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and get that started that way. Um, and that, again, that goes back to the proof of concept for myself, start getting the property and then uh, managing that, right? So, but after that, I well, you know, I'll go back to Diego. Diego asked me one question on the phone call that we had. He said, what fires you up? What fires you up? And I said, hmm, I've always thought it was rental properties, but is that really it? And so I want to look at flipping and I, and, I don't know. One time we we spoke in a quick call, or not spoke actually. I was uh, in at work and I was listening in, um, and I and I texted in or sent a message saying, "Hey, in quarter two, I want to start a flip." Mm-hmm. So that's right now, and, and I think if if that goes well, um, that's the that's the route I'm going to take. That's really what looks like what fires me up. So, mm-hmm. yeah, when when it goes well, is is the actual, when it goes well because. Go. Because I, I do fashion you as an operator. And from what I've seen from you is you follow through on what you're going to do. So it's barely, you know, the thing that's not talked about enough in the real estate space is, is momentum. It, momentum create, begets everything because a lot of people don't know that it took me seven years and eight deals that fell through, two of them on the day before closing, before I got my first property. And I sat in that first closing and I was like, about to throw up. Like I was literally about to throw up because so many had fell through and I just didn't believe that it was real. Yeah. And then when I closed on the first one, I bought two more in the, in the next eight months. And it was like, Oh shit, like this is good. We're good. And so, you know, what I always tell everybody that first one is so hard, but once you get rolling, the momentum kind of pulls you along and, and it just becomes this, this vehicle, you know, um, 
Diego is 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 my dude, man. That is my guy. Uh, he inspires me every day. And 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 Felipe, their their group is 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 really inspiring. Um, what have you learned that you want to share, or you think is the biggest takeaways from from joining a community of like minded individuals like that, and in that are that are just dreaming big, man. Just just pushing everybody. It just it just keeps you going yourself. Um, being around those people, just seeing what they achieve, whether small or big. I mean, there's some high operators there, and there's some people just in my situation, and you look at them like, man, they're doing this often. I know I got some ways to go, but I will get there. And that just keeps you going and rolling. Um, having conversations with them, being being able to reach out to them so easily is, mm -hmm. is great. Um, just surrounding yourself is the most important part. I mean, they, they give you different options. They bring up different topics. Um, you know, they have started different branches of rat race, if you will. They're looking at credit repair and things like that. So I can take that to other people that need it. Right, because I know some people don't need it. So that's all that, that all that is just is great to me. I think it's awesome. You know, I also, I also um, was able to reach out to to another guest of yours. I think Christian. Uh, yes. With a drop shipping store back in, in in the fall. So I'm working on that too. Yes, Christian is my dude, man. That guy is that guy's the best. You know, and that's and that's what it's about. Is is that. What I found as I've as I've dug into either the recovery space or or, or poverty poverty cities uh, with with just people in general, is that the options are what people are lacking. It's not the motivation. Yeah. It's not the will. So options. And so when you open people's eyes to new options, there's multiple lanes of revenue. What I've also studied is like you can't have your eggs in one basket. You know, you've got to be you got to be spreading it out. And so. My hope for you, my my dream for you, is that you don't have to be in the restaurant business as long as I had. And it's the and the thing with this is like, it's not that we don't love it. It's just that we we sure as hell would like to have weekends and holidays off. You know what I'm saying? You know what? That's not it for me. What's I, it? I work Monday to Friday. Okay. Ten years. The last ten years, it was great. I worked. The business model back then was strategically for business centers and downtowns. Okay. So we we opened from six to five was the hours of the stores. Okay. I had, it, man. I had a sweet sweet job. <laughs> but but you're right. Now I have that. I have to work weekends. Right. Yeah. Like, eh. yeah. All all we want is ownership of our time. Yeah. That's it. Do I do I have ownership of my time? If I don't, that's what I'm seeking. How fast can I get there? You know, and then and then how do we get there, right? And so, um, before we get out of here, I want you just to share your advice or your wisdom with anybody that's looking to lose weight, get in a mastermind, start investing in real estate. Give me like one through five or one through three, the things they should be focused on to get started today. Yep. Um, really look within and be self aware of what works for you, who you are. Um, I had the time to do that. You know, when restaurants, there's a lot of noise going on every day. Um, you're on call 24 seven, basically, regardless of the operation. Um, give, give yourself some time to really dig deep and, and listen, listen to your thoughts, um, whether good or bad and see what you like about it and, and really decide what's going to be right for you. Um, surround yourself with people that are doing what you want, look into the future of what you want and surround yourself with those, those individuals um, and reach out to, to people like you, Austin, like Diego, Felipe, and just see if they have the time to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised that a lot of people just want to help. Um, and, and that's definitely something that I took part in. So those, those are the top three. I mean, just take those actions and that, like you said, the momentum will build up after that. And, and, and more importantly, like seeking, not more importantly, I apologize, but importantly to add to that um, is basically just get started. Like it doesn't even matter if you're still working a job and you're spending 80% of your time over here or you're doing whatever you're doing, like 1% every day, read, read, move your body, surround yourself with people that are moving forward. 
Exactly. Just like you said. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. And so if people want to find out more about you and they want to follow your journey, how would they do that? I'm on IG at Mr. Octavio Diaz. Um, mm-hmm. That's probably the easiest way to reach out to me and go from there. I love it. And I just want to tell you that from the bottom of my heart, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for, for sharing the podcast. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And uh, I can't thank you enough because it means it means so much to me. Hey, man, you guys could put out good content. You learn a lot from you guys. I'm yeah. perfect. Thank you. Guys, if you like this episode, make sure you send it out to your friends and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learn. For show notes, resources, and more information on -on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.